All right, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our presentation on keyboarding. Yes, this is keyboarding unit number one. Uh, this is where things kind of get started off at. Now, I want you to understand a couple different things. First thing, every class, even if you've been with me before, even if you've had me before, we always cover keyboarding. Why? Well, it's always good to go over the information presented in there, right, as a refresher, so on and so forth. Two, a majority of students who have taken my class may not have had formal training on keyboarding and concepts, and so we got to accommodate for uh, everybody, even if you've taken my class before. So, when I talk keyboarding here, I am not just talking about piano keyboarding, right? And, in fact, many people associate uh, keyboarding with just using a typewriter. And some of the concepts that you use, you see with using a typewriter. Or, more specifically, these things that we keep in our pockets, right? Well, there's more to computing and keyboarding and typing than just that, right? So, we're going to be looking at terms, principles, and ideas. All right, first big idea we're going to look at. We're going to look at how does proper keyboarding affect typed communication, okay? Typed communication is an important thing. Uh, in business, the business world, in your student lives, so on and so forth, you're going to be typing a lot. Now, if you're thinking, well, Mr. C, we're going to these smartphones and these smart devices, and all you got to do is just use this uh, little dealy here and, and type with our thumbs, so why do we need to bother using the keyboard? Well, if you go to your average office, desktop computers are going to be all over the place, right? So typing proficiency is important. Typing efficiency and speed, there's a difference. We're going to talk about that, right? And also, um, if you're a more efficient and proficient typer, okay? Typer is not a word, by the way. Typist is the proper word. I shouldn't say typer. Mr. C is bad. If you are a efficient and proficient keyboard typist, you will be spending more time on how you are saying something and the language that you're using and the words you're putting together as opposed to the how you're going to type it, okay? You're going to be putting your energies elsewhere, all right? So it affects it in multiple ways, okay? We're also going to look at what you can do to improve on typing skills and why is improving important, okay? And we're going to roll out a program a little bit later on, all right? All right, so those are our big ideas. Seventh grade, we're not there, so we're not going to cover essential questions for seventh grade. For my eighth graders, here are my essential questions. All right. Uh, tying in with state standards 0101 and 1001, we can answer this question. How is proper keyboarding and uh, keyboarding technique still relevant in today's business world? We kind of answered that, right? And uh, you're going to see here that, um, you know, tablets, smart devices, although integrated into some businesses, may not be the primary tool in all businesses. Each business is different, okay? Additionally, I would say that if you go to uh, maybe your high school courses or so on and so forth, uh, when it comes to typing something, you're probably not going to be using these, and you're going to be finding that there's more room for error in these things, okay? Uh, so, yeah, we're going to look at the technique and why it's still relevant. Uh, we're going to look at what can you do to make yourself a better keyboard typist. Again, typer is not a word, okay? Surfer is, okay? Cooker is, but typer, not so much. It's typist, right? Just like fluter, if you play the flute, is not a word. It's flutist or flautist, if you're really fancy. All right? So what can you do to make yourself a better keyboard typist? In other words, what can you do to improve your speed and efficiency to become proficient on the keyboard? And then finally, we're going to look at how does typing correctly make you a better communicator? And we've already kind of hinted at that, right? When you're less focused on how to type, where to move your fingers, looking at the keyboard, looking up, and wasting a lot of energies, because it can be exhausting. If you become a proficient keyboard typist, you will be spending less time typing the work and spending more time figuring out what you're saying and how you're saying it, okay? Alrighty, let's see here. Next slide. Oh, this is one of my favorite videos. Um, I'm going to let Mr. Jason Rashia take over here. Um, Jason does speak fast like Mr. C does, and sometimes he stumbles over his words. But I'm going to let the video play out and let you guys watch it. So I'm going to take a quick pause here, and then we're going to let it 
continue and carry on. To talk about that amazing technological device known as a keyboard. Yes, something that many of you have not used in years because you're too busy texting and using your thumbs. Uh, but it is very important, right? We're in a computer class. We'll be using these every single day. So we want to make sure that you're going to be doing it in the proper way. So make sure you get out your notes, you follow the storm philosophy, and you sit back and enjoy. So what are you going to learn today? Well, we're going to talk about the goal. Why are we talking about keyboarding? Why am I teaching keyboarding? Well, there is a goal there. We're going to talk about the benefits of good keyboarding skills, how that's going to benefit you in your future. We're going to look at the seven proper keyboarding techniques. Yes, that lucky number seven. And lastly, we will identify the proper finger placement. So in teaching you how to properly keyboard, I do have a goal in mind. I want you to be able to touch type, so use your fingers and type, at a reasonable speed with good accuracy. This means that you can type on the keyboard without looking at the keys. You can look at the monitor, you can look at your notes, you can look at anywhere else and be able to keyboard touch type at a pretty good speed with pretty good accuracy. So that's my goal, but it should also be your goal. Right? You want to be able to do this at a reasonable speed with good accuracy because it will benefit you. It's not just about achieving my goals, although those are very important. It's about achieving your goals too. And here's why. If you're able to touch type at a reasonable speed with great accuracy, you'll be more efficient in your future. Think about all the courses you're going to take through your high school career as well as university, college, or even the workplace. Most jobs, most courses... Most colleges, universities, so on and so forth, require typing, especially computer courses. But any course, if you think about it, you have to write reports, and these have to be typed. In the workplace, you're going to have to write reports too, and these are going to have to be typed. Right? So it's going to make it more efficient. You'll have more free time to do other things. And that's what will lead to greater success in the workplace or university or college. Right? More free time to do other things, to explore, to innovate, do all sorts of other things. And as previously mentioned, it will help you in your future career. You can key your own information. You can set up the proper forms really quickly. You can type your letters, your reports, your memos. Right? All those things that are required on a daily basis in your future career, you'll be able to type very quickly. And thus, you'll excel in the workplace. Right? And with that comes, well, greater profits for you. And if you can type quick enough, you can key your own essays, your reports, your notes in class, your review sheets. And this can be done faster than handwriting. And thus, you can save it, you can edit it, you can print it, you can use it multiple times, and that's going to benefit you. Right? If you can type quickly and effectively and efficiently, right, you can make money. You make a lot of money. There's many jobs out there that require really sp- fast keyboard skills. Now, I'm not talking about writing essays for others. I'm talking about those jobs that require keying all the time. All right? So become really good at it. You have a job waiting for you. Right? If you can keyboard really well, then you will become more employable, more marketable. I mean, it's basically a given now. Everyone has to be able to use the keyboard right, pretty effectively and efficiently. It's just part of the day-to-day tasks of working in many careers. The minimum in business for keying skills is 40 words per minute. So I, I challenge you, open up a Word document, type out 40 words in a minute, see if you can do that. If you can, you're ready for the workplace. If you can't, then that's why we're here. We need to work on this. The other thing is that if you're going to be sitting in front of a computer for, well, the rest of your life almost, at least in your career, then you need to make sure that you are employing the proper technique. If you don't, then you will develop poor posture. You will develop all sorts of conditions associated with your spine and your wrists and carpal tunnel and things like this. So you need to make sure that you're doing it effectively. Right? Proper posture will prevent injuries over the long term. Hand-eye coordination is another benefit. Right? If you can type without looking, that's your hand-eye coordination. You can look at something else and type. I mean, this is very valuable in any sport uh, that you're playing, or such as baseball or cricket or anything like this. Hand-eye coordination is very valuable. So practice. Use the keyboard. Type away and, and develop that hand-eye coordination. How many of you have poor handwriting? Well, if you key your work, it's going to be more neater. Right? The applications that you can use can t- check for errors and make sure that it's error-free. Right? Spelling and grammar checks. Right? You still need to proofread, but if you key your work, it's much easier to edit this work, and it's easier for me to read it in a lot of cases. Right? So that's something else that you want to consider. So if we're going to reap all of these benefits, then we need to make sure that you identify the seven proper keyboarding techniques, and you employ these every time you use the keyboard. 
So good posture, body position, feet on the floor, fingers curved, fingers on the home row, quiet, wrists and elbows, and eyes on copy. So let's go through each of these now. So good posture refers to whether you are sitting up tall. Are you leaning slightly forward in your chair? Are you facing toward your computer? If you're not doing any of these, or you're not doing one of these, then you're developing bad posture. And this can cause many serious health effects. So make sure that you're up tall, that you're leaning slightly forward, and that you're facing the computer. Right? This will help you in the long run. Your body position is also important. The keyboard should be at the edge of your table. Right? The body, your body, should be a hand span away from this keyboard. You should be centered at the B key or the middle of the space bar. By doing so, you'll have proper body position. And again, this will help you in the long run. Your feet on the floor is also important. Many don't consider this, but you want to have your feet on the floor. You want to have them in a resting position, slightly balanced, slightly apart, right? In that feeling of balance so that you can maneuver in your chair if you need to and so you're sitting properly and comfortably fingers curved refers to how comfortable your fingers are curved on the keyboard are your fingers upright and not leaning are your thumbs resting on the space bar make sure that you take into account your fingers and how they're positioned and how comfortable they are because this is what you are using all the time and you want to make sure that you it is a comfortable experience also with your fingers, you need to make sure that they're resting on the home row. Yes, this is the row A through the comma key. We call this the home row because this is where your fingers should return to after every key stroke. Right? Rest your fingers on the F and the J key. By doing so, you'll be in a proper keyboarding form and you will benefit in the long run. Number six is all about quiet wrists and elbows. No, we're not talking about your wrists talking too loudly or making music. We're talking about them being level and relaxed. We want our wrists not resting on the keyboard or the table. This will develop carpal tunnel syndrome. This is something that will hurt, believe me. With old age, this will really hurt. So you want your elbows resting naturally at your side and you want your shoulders relaxed. By doing this, again, proper keyboard technique. And number seven, last but not least, is your eyes on copy. Now, this is what you are typing, right? You're copying something, you're typing it into your word processor, or you're copying something from another program. You want to make sure that your copy, whatever you're looking at, is in the right place, that's adjusted properly, that you can see it clearly, right? That you're, you're looking at it, and you don't have to look down at the keys, right? By doing this, you'll be more, more speedy, speedy Gonzalez, and you can type very quickly. So this is what it looks like. Your fingers should be placed at appropriate positions on the keyboard. Your index fingers, yes, those pointy fingers that you point at everyone with, should be carefully placed on the F and the J key. Your other fingers then are placed on the keys next to it. And your fingers can then touch any of the keys above or below this home position. And each finger is responsible for X amount of keys. Right? If you're going to type your name, what fingers are you going to use? Well, look at the, the diagram here. Identify how you're going to touch each of these keys all right this is how to properly keyboard for a more elaborate view of the keyboard and which keys your fingers strike this keyboard now notice i have three hands all of a sudden no that's your right hand right if you ever need to use the number pad you will use your right hand and then again each finger is responsible for a certain number of keys on this number pad right so your fingers will strike all of these keys according to where they're placed on the keyboard. And if you place them accordingly and using the home row as your guide, then you can return very quickly back to your F and the J key and any of your home keys therein. And you can type much more quickly and more effectively and therefore benefit in the long run. Well, this brings us to the end of this presentation. Consider this for a second. When I was in grade nine, my grade nine business class was only about keyboarding. Look how far we've come. You guys are learning much more than just simple keyboarding. This is now a common skill that many of you have developed through the years. Computers are so a part of your, te of your lives and you need to use these accordingly and effectively. So consider your own typing skills. What part of the seven techniques can you most improve upon?
All right, now that we've had a chance to hear from Mr. Jason Rashia, let's take what he had to say and let's kick it up a notch, right? Hopefully, you picked up on the uh, different colors to use for the different fingers. In other words, there are certain fingers that need to be used with each key, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail. Now, if you're in class with me, I probably stopped the video and showed you, right? Ideally, the key, the letters, look at your keyboard right now, look at it right now, right? Uh, the letters between V and R, T, G, B, Y, H, N, and uh, such, right? And U, J, M, you need to be using your primary fingers, right? And uh, the keys, or for the keys, between uh, E, D, C on your left hand, and of course, uh, I, K, and then uh, comma, you need to be using your middle fingers, and then so on and so forth. You can get the idea there. And the idea is, is that you're not lifting your fingers, you're not floating around the keyboard, you're not having to reset yourself. Why? Because you're trying to improve upon your efficiency. All right? So that gets me to this next section. What is the difference between speed and efficiency? Because believe it or not, they are not the same things, all right? Now, let me ask you this, right? If I had a race car that was designed to go in straight lines, and, you, and if you follow NHRA drag racing, you know what I'm talking about, right? Those big top fuel dragsters that make a lot of noise, produce thousands and thousands, almost 10,000 hor uh, horsepower, right? And uh, can do a quarter mile at over 300 miles an hour, right? That's a quarter mile. It's one time around the track, like a regular track in a straight line, right? So if you're stretched it out to a straight line, you know, at 300 miles an hour, okay, that vehicle is going to get there really, really fast. But as soon as you implement turns, that vehicle cannot do that kind of track. And it's not how it's designed because it's efficient to go in a straight line as fast as possible, not to go around curvy lines, okay? So efficiency is maximum productivity with limited waste or expense, okay? Maximum productivity with limited waste or expense. So when it comes to businesses, businesses like to think about things like wages. How much are they paying people? They like to think on terms of getting the best customer service or giving the best customer service if they can, right? And it allows businesses to give attention to other resources. That makes sense, right? So think about this, right? If I were a customer of, say, Comcast, right, and I had a customer service complaint, all right, when I finally get a hold of somebody at Comcast on customer service, right, I would like for them to document my problem and be able to talk to them at the same time, okay? I don't want them to go, okay, hang on just a second, Mr. Cato. I need to take about five minutes and type up what you have going on. That's not efficient, right? Not efficient at all, right? So they need to be able to do that while they are on the phone at the same time with me, all right? customer service okay wages wise right if I was a boss somewhere and I asked somebody says hey I have a letter here that I need to have reformatted okay here's a physical copy of it I need it retyped and reformatted okay can you do that for me I don't want the secretary to be like uh, yeah I could do that but it's gonna take me about three hours right yeah that's not gonna work not gonna work at all right so efficiency going back to that Prius right in the dragster, okay? A Prius can get over 50 miles a gallon, right? That dragster is going to burn through about 10 gallons in about five seconds, right? Because the Prius is designed to use fuel more efficiently, right? Now, speed, on the other hand, that's different. Speed is the rate at which one is able to operate something or perform a task, right? Think of your 40-yard uh, dash, right? person can run 40 yards, point A, starting point to end in point B at a certain time. The faster you can do it, all right, the faster you are, okay? That is speed. Now, the advantage of speed is it allows you to have time for other things. But understand this, just because you're fast doesn't make you accurate, okay? Just because you're fast doesn't make you efficient, right? I could input data in the keyboard by just slamming my fingers on the keyboard. Don't do that in my classroom, okay? And then have all that data go into the keyboard. But is that efficient? Is that correct? 
not so much, all right? So there is a difference, all right? So what can realistically be expected? Well, I'm going to get to that in just a second, okay? But I do want you to know this. Good keyboarding technique and posture, okay? And we'll talk more about that in my next lesson. Helps prevent future injury and long-term health problems. Helps prevent. Doesn't always prevent, but it helps prevent, okay? And we'll talk more about that in detail. If you wanted a little sneak peek, you could check out those two links, okay? And that's for your resources for you to use. If you're watching this on the video uh, on my um, YouTube channel, open up the corresponding PowerPoint and follow those links, okay? So what are realistic expectations in middle school, all right? Well, it's pretty simple, okay? Miss Teresia Ostrich, okay, or Ostrich, I don't know how you pronounce that, or Ostrach, I don't know, whatever. She ran a company uh, called Five Star Staffing, okay, and what staffing companies do is that if a business has a need and they don't want to bring somebody on full time, they might say, hey, I need some temporary help, okay, uh, let me call some staffing agencies and pay them, and that person will be here to help with work. Okay, and that's fine. That's cool. That's a great way. Mr. C worked for a staffing agency when he was 18 during the summer. Okay, well, she did a test. Okay, and uh, usually for staffing companies, they require a test. Well, Mr. C worked for the staffing company. I had to take a typing test. I had to take a test where I deciphered numbers and figured those out, where I put sequences together to basically, basically some work skills that you would need in the workforce. Okay, and she found out when she did the test that. Um, of all the people that she tested, and she tested about 3,475, okay, she found that the average person typed about 40 words a minute, okay, that's with experience, so on and so forth, right, the median was at 38, but the mode was 31, so in other words, most people did the 31, but the average, when you include the fastest and the slowest, more efficient, less proficient, so on and so forth, was right at that uh, 40 words a minute. Now, as you can see, according to that bell chart right there, that little graph, okay, where it says figure one, right, um, there were people who typed less than 20 words and 10 words a minute. There were people who typed more than 70 words a minute and up to over 100 words a minute, right? So, yeah, there are people that can do that. Do I expect you to be at that 40 word or 30 word a minute in, high, in middle school? Not so much, all right? We should be aiming between that 20 and 30 mark. Do Will I have students? who are able to perform in the 40 and half faster and faster? Yes. All right. I've had three students who are able to type faster than I can and beat me on nitro type. And we'll talk more about that later on. Okay. And that's fine. All right. And Mr. C is an okay. He's a, a, he's a little bit higher than average keyboard typist. All right. I shouldn't use the word typer. Typer is not a word. Okay. He's a little bit better than average, okay? But his sisters can type circles around him, all right? That's because, you know, of their regular jobs, all right? My regular job, I'm not in front of the keyboard all day long, that kind of thing, all right? So those are your realistic expectations. Now, as far as the assignment is concerned, um, Mr. C has taken this year and we're pulling away from, well, let me rephrase that. If you had Mr. C last year, you remember using DocHub, all right, where you had to use DocHub, import that or export that document to Google Drive and then turn it in, all right? I'm getting rid of that step, okay? We are going to use either Docs or Slides or other software to get our documents turned in that will make it a whole lot easier for us to do our work, okay? So you will find on Google Classroom a Google Slides that has some information on there, this information right here, okay? And you're gonna use your text tool to answer the slides, okay? Pretty simple. You're gonna use your text tool to answer the slides. You simply draw your text box and answer your slide. You use your tools to circle or check something, so on and so forth. There is no exporting. All you gotta do is attach your document. And I'll have a video on how to do that for the those in Columbia Homeroom. And I will uh, show you how to do that in class if you're in my class. So uh, one last thing, if you are in my class and in the classroom, I will go over these answers with you. That doesn't mean we wait for Mr. C to give you the answers. I want you to put your honest effort in and then go back and check to see where you went wrong. If you are in Columbia Homeroom, okay, you're going to have to uh, look at the overall video 
and see what's been implied or inferred because sometimes I don't cover those questions and answers in detail, right? But they are somewhere inferred or implied or stated somewhere in the presentation itself, all right? So uh, next video, we'll talk about some basic vocabulary terms or terms that you should know about for the keyboarding world, and we'll talk more about that posture and uh, health.